Okay, in this video we're going to record module 34. And the first topic is solving a quadratic inequality written in factored form. So the directions say graph the solution to the following inequality on the number line. So here's the situation. Normally when this is an equal sign, we set each factor equal to zero to find the answers to the equation. However, when it's an inequality, setting each factor to zero only gives you what I call points of interest or critical numbers. So these are not necessarily the answers. Um, these will just help you to come up with the answer. So the solution is a range of x values. What x values can you plug in here such that when you plug them in here, this product will end up being less than zero or will end up being negative, right? Less than zero means negative. And then greater than zero means positive. So what we do is we create a number line. And as far as these two numbers are concerned, negative six would be on this side and positive five would be on that side. And then what we do is we pick test points in each region to figure out which of these sections satisfies this inequality. So on this side, a number less than negative six would be like negative seven. A number in between a negative and a positive, try to always pick zero just because it's easy to plug in. And then a number to the right of five, maybe positive six. So these numbers that I have here in red are my test values. So what that means is I'm going to plug in these numbers for x into the original inequality. And I'm basically going to see if this is a true statement or not. So negative five and negative seven is going to give me negative 12, negative seven and negatives and positive six is gonna give me negative one. And when I multiply these two numbers, I end up with a positive 12. Well, positive 12 is not less than zero. Therefore, this part of the region of the graph will not be part of the answer. Also, let's try the next test point, zero. So when I plug in zero, I get negative five times positive six, which is negative 30. And that is less than zero, which means that this section in here is part of the answer. Now let's test the last section. So we get positive one times positive 12, which is positive 12. And again, this is not, 12 is not less than zero. So this section is not going to be part of my solution. So the only part of my solution is between negative six and five. And since they asked me to graph the solution, the only thing we're missing from the final answer We know which region to shade. The only thing we're missing is what kind of points should we be putting on this number line. Since this is a strict inequality and there's no equal bar, they should both be open dots. And this is the answer to the problem. So setting it equal to zero only gives you the points of interest, okay? Basically separates your intervals so now I have three intervals to test for these two answers. 
You test each region to see which one gives you true statements in the original inequality. And then the ones that work are going to be the parts that are your answer. So only between negative six and five tested to work. So that's the only region that I shaded in my final answer. Now the next topic is solving a quadratic inequality. So it says graph the solution to the following inequality on the number line. Now this is the exact same kind of problem as the previous one. The only thing different is this one is not set up already for in factored form for me to identify what those um, points of interest are. And in order for us to get it into that form, we have to first get all the terms to one side. And then we have to factor the left hand side. Now it looks just like the problem before. So if I set one factor equal to zero and another factor equal to zero, I get my two points interest. So then I'm going to create this number line. Zero is to the left of six. And now I have my three regions that I need to test. So picking a number to the left of zero, say negative one, picking a number in between um, zero and six, I'll just use three. And then picking a number to the right of six, I'll use positive seven. Now remember, we've got to plug these into the Actually, here you have a choice. You can plug them into the original, or you can plug them into the factored version since every single one of these lines is equivalent to the previous, okay? So I'm gonna choose to plug it into my factored version. And when I do this, I'm only gonna use the signs to figure out what's going on, okay? So if I plug in a negative one here, I'm gonna have a negative response in the front. I don't even need to know the number. I just need to know the sign. Then if I plug a negative one in here, negative one and negative six is gonna make another negative. When I multiply these two negatives, ultimately I'm gonna end up with the positive. Now let's move on to positive three. If I plug in positive three right here, it's going to stay a positive number. If I plug in positive three here, positive three take away six is going to end up with a negative number. When I multiply those, I'm gonna ultimately end up negative. When I plug in seven, the outside will be positive, seven minus six will be a positive, and when I multiply these values, I end up with a positive. Now, which sections are supposed to be part of my answers? Which one of these sections, or which ones of these sections satisfy this inequality here. Well, remember what I'm looking for. I'm looking for numbers that are greater than zero, which means I'm looking for numbers that are positive. And according to the work we've done here, there's actually two regions that fit this description, to the far left and to the far right. So here we actually have two regions that are part of our answer. The only thing we really need to um, finish is what kind of endpoints do we have on 0 and 6. Again, there is no equal bar, so these should have open dots at the ends. And this is the final answer. I could have left this and just boxed that, put the endpoints there and there but I just wanted to clean it up so you can see what the final answer looks like without all the test mess in the way. Okay, here's the same thing. We have to get all the terms to one side before we can factor it. And then if I factor this, I get x minus four. factor equal to zero, we get x equals four and x equals two. So we'll set up our number line. Two is on the left, 
four is on the right, and pick our test points. So in this region, I'm gonna pick zero, in here we'll pick three, and over here we'll pick five. Now remember, you're only concerned about the signs in the factored version. So if I plug in zero in here, this is gonna end up being a negative. If I plug zero in here, this is gonna end up being a negative, and a negative times a negative is positive. Here, if I plug in three, I'm gonna end up with the negative for this factor. And when I plug in three here, I'm gonna end up with the positive for this factor. When I multiply those, I ultimately end up negative. Now five, if I plug in five into this factor, I'm going to get a positive. And if I plug in five into this factor, I'm going to get a positive. So ultimately, when I multiply positive times positive, we get positive. Which sections are we supposed to be shading in? Look at your inequality. This says that the product should be greater than or equal to zero, which means it should be positive. So we are looking for the two, well, there happens to be two, but we are looking for the parts where there were the region tested to be positive. So that means this section and this section are part of the answer. And then the last thing to do is to figure out what kind of endpoints belong on two and four. And since this one does have a bar at the bottom, that means this will have a solid dot. And the same for the four. And this is your final answer. Okay, here we're solving a polynomial. There's really no big difference, except for now you have three factors or more than two um, from now on in this particular section. Now, the other difference is, is that now they want us to write our answer not in a graph, but in interval notation, which is fine because we're already gonna have the graph from the testing, and so then therefore we'll get the um, interval notation pretty easily from that graph. So since it's already in factored form, I'm just gonna set each factor equal to zero. And I get x equals negative six, one equals x, and x equals four. So those are my three test points. So when I create my number line, I have to remember the order that they belong in. And they happen to be in order as they would appear on the number line. So then now we test our points. Remember, between a negative and a positive, try to choose zero. Here we can pick a number in there. And then on this side of the region, we'll pick five. So because there's three numbers here, now we have four regions that we have to check. Okay. So remember, you're only checking the signs, so plug them into the original because it's already in factored form. So a negative 7 in there would give me a negative. A negative 7 in here would be double negative, so it'd actually be 1 plus 7 to give me a positive. Negative 7 and negative 4 would give me a negative. If I multiply all these signs together, I'm going to get a big fat positive. When I plug in 0, the first factor will be positive. When I plug in zero here, that factor will be positive. When I plug in zero here, that factor will be negative, ultimately resulting in a negative for that region. Now when I test two, positive two and positive six will give me a positive. One minus a positive two will actually give me a negative. And then two minus four will give me a negative. When I multiply all these signs together, ultimately end up with the positive. Now to test this last region, we're going to plug in 5. So 5 plus 6 is a positive, 1 minus 5 is a negative, and 5 minus 4 is a positive. If I multiply all these together, I end up negative. So we're obviously going to have two sections here, um, but which two sections? Is it these two or is it these two? Go back to the original inequality. Where is that zero? Here I'm looking for numbers that are less than zero. So that 
means I'm looking for negative sections. So here, between negative 6 and 1, and over here, 4 to infinity. Okay? And then what kind of endpoints should we have? Because this is a bar, I should have solid points at each one of those um, points of interest. So then now you have the graph. You just need to put this into interval notation. So we have two regions here, which means I am going to need to use a union to tell the reader that both of these sections are part of my answer. The first section is from negative 6 to 1. Always go left to right. And because I've got um, solid dots there, they're going to have brackets. This region over here is from 4 to infinity. 4 is going to have a bracket and parentheses, oh, I mean, sorry, infinity always has parentheses. So my final answer here will be these two intervals. Okay, we have another one. It's the same topic. It's just this is problem type 2. So we're going to be doing the same steps. Set this factor equal to 0. If I take the square root, we get x equals negative 2. Get the other factor equal to 0. We get negative 5. So we only have two critical numbers in this example. And be sure you put them in the correct order here as they should be on the number line. Negative 5 is going to be to the left of negative 2. Then plug in your test values. And then let's see. So we have negative 6 plus 2. Negative 6 plus 2 would be a negative squared and negative 6 plus 5 will be a negative. Negative 3 plus 2 will be a negative squared and then negative 3 plus 5 will be a positive. Um, 0 plus 2 will be a positive squared and then 0 plus 5 will be a positive. So remember this is getting squared. What's a negative times a negative? That's a positive. So ultimately we end up with a negative for this region. Here a negative squared again is a positive but a positive times a positive is positive. Here a positive squared is positive, and then times the other positive also gives us positive. Which regions are we looking for? Are we looking for the negative region or the positive regions? This says it's greater than zero, which means we should be looking for the positive regions. Okay, so these two, I'm gonna shade here and here. And because it has a bar, that means there's going to be a solid dot here and a solid dot here. Now this one's a little interesting in that it looks like you have two separate regions, but because this is all a solid line and that's a solid line, a solid dot, you could think of it as the entire thing to the right is solid. Therefore, you don't need two separate intervals. You can just say from negative five all the way, everything is solid there until infinity. Infinity always gets a parenthesis, and negative 5, because there's a solid dot, should have a bracket. And so this is your answer in interval notation. Let's try one more. So set each factor equal to 0. So here we actually have four numbers, and we got to make sure we put them in order. So negative 4, negative 1, 1, and 3, which means we're going to have five values to test. So let's start plugging them in. We're going to end up with negative time and a negative is negative. 
negative 5 squared would be a positive 25 minus 1 is a positive and then negative 5 plus 4 is going to be a negative so this region is positive in the end now I'm testing negative 3 negative 3 and negative 3 is a negative negative 3 squared is positive 9 minus 1 which is positive and negative 3 plus 4 is positive so this region ends up negative in the end now plugging in 0 we end up with negative 0 minus 1 is negative and 0 plus 4 is positive so this ends up being positive in the region plugging in 2 now we get negative 4 minus 1 is positive and 2 plus 4 is positive so we end up negative in this region here now we're going to test this region by plugging in 4 we end up with a positive 16 minus 1 is positive and a positive so this region is positive so which regions are we taking to be our solutions here it says that they want this value this product to be greater than 0 which means we're only looking for the positives so that means I'm going to shade this region over there and this region in the middle there is no bar on this inequality so there should be open dots at each of the ends of the intervals I don't need to put an open dot here I mean you could if you wanted to but nothing was shaded in that region so that region's not going to be part of your answer anyway now let's go ahead and put this in interval notation so from the left we have negative infinity with the parentheses to negative 4 and because of the open dot it will have a parentheses union from negative 1 to positive 1 again both open dots so both parentheses the 3 will not be part of our answer since there's nothing there and there's nothing shaded in that region still have about three more topics so I'm going to stop this video here and do those three topics in another video.